Hey, how's it going? It's Ollie here. So what on earth is going on with this shipping container crisis in China? And why are freight prices so incredibly high? Well, these are the two things that I talked about on a recent uh, platinum coaching call that I had with all my platinum clients. And really, these are two big issues that if you're planning on selling on Amazon that you need to know about. It's probably a good idea to know why it's happening and also what you can do about it as a seller because whenever there's an issue uh, you know with current events there's always an opportunity and there's definitely plenty of opportunities right now so I'm going to show you a clip of uh, a platinum coaching call that I had recently where I explained exactly what was going on exactly what you can do uh, right now with this whole crisis uh, and I think this will be really really interesting for you so I'm going to cut to the clip let me know in the comments uh, if you enjoy it uh, and if you have any other questions so what's happened is last year if we take the average cost of um an import of let's say a 40 foot shipping container okay which is an average size shipping container that goes on a ship that's from uh, China to really anywhere in the world. But if we just talk about Europe for now, um, last year, beginning of last year, say 2019 January, um, that would have cost how much? Does anybody know? Type in the chat if you have any idea. How much would it have cost without Googling it if you know off the top of your head? Let me know. If you don't know, no worries. It's a rather arbitrary fact. Let's have a look. So, I mean, to be honest, these figures are kind of ballpark and they you probably all be right so somebody the name hasn't appeared yet said three thousand to four thousand usd says mike yes exactly um so it varies i've seen figures all the way down to 1500 all the way up to four thousand ish but let's say on average about two thousand um from the stats that i've seen um, from one particular source, right? But yeah, certainly some, depending on where you're shipping from and to, can be up to 3,000 to 4,000 US dollars. Um, now, in February 2021, just to make this clear, I'm going to put January 2020. Um, February 21, a container that would have cost $2,000 to ship from China to Europe now is costing $5,000. And they're going all the way up to $8,000, $12,000 to ship from China to, to Europe. So obviously, this is a crazy increase in price. And it's a crazy increase in expenses for any e-commerce seller. In fact, what's happened is we've had over a two times increase from a 2.2, maybe a 2.5 uh, times increase in price over the past year. And mainly over the past six months is really when it's actually began to skyrocket. So the question is, th this is what's happening. Why is it happening? Like, why is it so much more expensive now? Why has the price shot up? Well, it's because there's way more demand than supply. Simple as that, really, as an overview. There's way more demand than supply. So loads of people need their stuff to be shipped from China, but there's not enough available space on planes and boats to ship it so obviously in, in in any free market whenever there's loads and loads of demand for something and not much supply what happens the price goes up right same like when in uh, on amazon if if there were loads of people who wanted a certain product and all of a sudden 50 percent of the sellers disappeared the remaining 50 percent of the sellers could probably increase their prices and because there's less competition um customers would have to pay it that's what happened with um so many things like the ps5s for example um you know sony didn't make enough stock loads of people wanted a playstation 5 
And so people were selling them on eBay for like two grand or all these other sites because there's no supply and loads of demand. Exactly the same thing. So what was causing this ridiculous uh, increase in demand and, and ridiculous uh, drop in supply? Like why can these companies ship the products from China to Europe? Why was there not enough supply? Well, basically what happened was uh, in 2020, in the second quarter, and also in the third quarter, quarter two and quarter three, um, Europe and USA imported less stuff. They slowed down their imports from somewhere between five to 15%. So what they did is they did way less importing for the quarter compared to the average they do during that quarter. Okay, so they, they all just kind of slowed down their imports and they just didn't import as much stuff. Um, now this wouldn't be a problem because then there's less demand, but then what happened was because of that, they needed to all play catch up in quarter four because all of the stock that they would have imported ready for quarter four during quarter two and quarter three, they didn't have. So everyone was like, oh my God, we need to import stuff ready for quarter four and also ready for quarter one. So what happened was now you've got a slump that was happening in quarter two and three. And then in quarter four, we have a surge, which is higher than the usual surge because we're making up for the dip. Right, so now there's way more demand during quarter four than there ever was. So this was the, the, one of the first things that started the issue. And this is when the prices of the freight um, started to go up. So this is when it probably went from, I don't know, 2,000 to maybe 3,000, 3,500 for your average import, right? That was the first thing that happened that kicked this whole thing off. Then what happened to that, to, to add to insult to injury, there were less commercial flights, from uh, China and to Europe, Europe to China, China to Africa, to USA and back to China. And so as you guys know, what usually happens with commercial flights, so I'm talking EasyJet, um, AirAsia, um, you know, uh, whatever, Chinese, China Airlines, whatever, all, all the planes that we go on holiday on, right? And people travel back and forth. So you have the plane and you have passengers on the plane, obviously, on the top. You also have luggage on the bottom, but as well as luggage, there's a compartment for um, freight, for products. These can be anything from iPhones to um, products that you're importing uh, to, um, yeah, anything you, you want to import. If you want to use air freight, then sometimes it goes on the bottom of a plane. Now, if there's loads less commercial flights available, then what happens is all those people that usually would import stuff on the bottom of a plane can't do that anymore. So what do they do? Type in the chat, if you can't import stuff from a commercial plane and you, you need the stuff, where do you turn? What's your other option? Well, if we can't import stuff from uh, on the bottom of a plane, we put it on a ship, as Suja said. Exactly right. So everybody who usually imports stuff by air started to import stuff by sea. So this started to create an even bigger problem now because everyone's using the same channel there's a way bigger demand because because quarter two and quarter three had a slump and everyone's catching up in, in quarter four and they're all using c freight so things there's basically like a, a bottleneck like a uh like a pressure valve now and everyone's trying to get through a tiny 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 little tunnel and there's just not enough room now in addition to this the other stuff that happened was, uh, first of all, Christmas 
there was a huge Christmas rush there always is. So this added to the, the quarter four rush. On top of the backlog, there was also the quarter four rush. And then moving into this year, 2021, also Chinese New Year, right? There's a break for Chinese New Year. Everyone knows there's a break for say three weeks, four weeks. So they need to get their stuff shipped before Chinese New Year. So beginning of quarter one always sees a massive rush as well. So this kind of surge spilled over into quarter one. So look, this, this started the problem. And then what happened next, which actually made things way, way, way more complicated, was the container crisis. So this is what happened. This is this is what made everything worse. So why is there a container crisis? What happened? Why are there no containers? And, and how is this going to affect you? Um, and how did it start? Well, basically it started with containers being left at ports uh, in everywhere apart from China, right? So obviously China would ship uh, products in containers to Europe, to America, to Africa and other places. Um, and they would get stuck at these ports. And the reason why is because less ships were going back and forth. So usually what happens is ships will go from China to Europe and they'll go back from Europe to China. But because there were less ships going back and forth, a lot of the containers couldn't be transported back. So they actually got stuck. And now there's loads of containers in Europe, in America, and in Africa, and other places. And, and there's not enough in China. So this is causing a huge problem. Another thing that happened as well is that obviously China recovered first with Corona. In fact, they're, they're doing relatively well. If you look at the stats, um, right now they're they're doing pretty well it's actually quite encouraging to to if you're feeling down about the situation look at china like the you know they seem to be recovering but yeah they recovered from the whole situation first um and so what they did is they actually resumed exports before we started to resume imports this is around the quarter two and three area where we had a slump. So we had a slump and they had a surge of exports. So what happened next is they were sending even more containers from China to Europe and then they weren't getting any back. And basically the ratio of that is actually three to one. Like for every uh, container that China was sending out to Europe and to America, they're only getting one back. So if you can imagine, three times the amount of containers were coming out of China as one going back, and obviously we're just going to get less and less and less and less containers in China, right? Also, there were uh, workplace restrictions in America and some other places, um, and this affected ports. So less people could be working at ports, so less people could be unloading containers, um, and less people could be um, taking the ships in. So not as many ships could go in and not as many containers could be put onto new ships because there were just less staff at the ports. And also to top it all off, make it even more complicated, um, there was tons of congestion at customs because of all the restrictions on uh, borders. And as the borders were tightening, less staff could come in and out so this just meant that everything was moving so much slower. And that's why we had things like Felix, though, being completely crammed in January. Right. So that all this stuff just led to it getting more and more difficult for things to get imported. And then because of all of that stuff, the price increased because there's, like I said, tons of demand. And because of the container crisis and because of um, less available um, shipping routes and, and all that stuff, less, uh, uh, less supply. So this is what happened basically. 
Um, and I wanted to tell you guys, and just, just so you're informed, because this stuff matters. I mean, we're all in the importing business. We all need to be informed of this stuff. And to be honest, I find it kind of interesting, um, like the turn of events that's actually led it to happen. But, you know, being in, in the e-commerce world, obviously the big question you, you, you're probably asking is, okay, so what can we do now? What can we do now? The, the price of importing products has doubled, um, more than doubled, actually. And it's harder to get stuff shipped over. And if you do want to do it, it's expensive. So what should you do in a situation like this? Well, always, whenever there's chaos, um, what happens is most people, uh, first thing they do, because we're human beings, is they get emotional about it. And they get caught up in the chaos. And they start to feel extremely lost. They start to panic and they start to go crazy. Right? And this is the least productive thing you can do. All right, so the first thing to do is to do not get emotional about it. All right, don't freak out because anytime something like this happens, on the flip side of it, there's always an opportunity, like a huge opportunity where people are going to get extremely wealthy. Like right now, if you are a company that has the capability to create shipping containers, then you're going to be like a multi, multi, multi millionaire in the next few months. Right now, I know that's none of us probably, but I'm just saying anytime there's a, a crisis, there's an opportunity as well. So the key thing is not to get emotional or worried about it because number one, the situation is going to resolve itself soon at some point. All right, but number two, emotions is not what you should be focusing on. You're a business owner. So what you should be focusing on are the numbers. Focus on numbers. All right, that's the most important thing you can do. So how do we focus on numbers? Well, we get quotes for shipping. Figure out what the shipping is going to cost. And it's a very simple binary decision. Is it profitable? Or should I say, is it profitable enough? If it is, the answer is yes, and your particular shipment of stuff is profitable enough, and a lot of products will be, then just order. You know, paying a little bit extra for shipping probably isn't going to be the end of the world. Yes, it will eat into your profit margins, but we, if we're thinking long term, every sale you get on Amazon could lead to a review. Every review you get on Amazon leads to having a much more solid listing and it leads to you getting future sales. Every sale you get leads to you getting a better ranking position in, in the search results, which leads to better future sales. So even if you make less profit on this particular import, you're basically investing in the future of your product and in the future of your brand anyway. So if it is profitable enough, then order. If the answer is no, and it's not profitable enough, which in many cases it might be right now for the next few weeks, just hold out for a while. Wait and see what happens. Wait for things to just die down a little bit. One thing you can do, one thing you can do right now, as I said in a YouTube video recently, is just switch your focus from big imports to new test batches. Test batches are not going to be affected by this because, number one, we're using express shipping. Number two, we're not focusing on profit and we're doing very small orders anyway. So it's not like you're going to ship 500 units that need to be shipped by sea. Right? We're going to be spending a few hundred dollars on express shipping and it really doesn't make any difference, uh, you know, because we're not going to be profitable anyway. So, yeah, this is this is um, the solution to these issues right now. Uh, Mike's actually put a really good point in in the chat for shipping if you can give the forwarder a wider date range they could find you a better price rather than expect it to be collected in days collected straight away even yeah absolutely yeah so you can speak to your forwarder and just say well um i'm not in a major rush um 
let me know if it's basically ask them you know how can i save money and they'll have suggestions for you um always right always be asked speaking to people communicating and figuring out ways to do things cheaper more efficiently yeah great point mike awesome all right so that explains the increased freight prices is this stuff clear type yes in the chat if that was helpful interesting um useful uh cleared things up for you did i cover it clearly enough anybody confused stuck doesn't know what's going on worried yes lots of you saying yes fantastic cool Alrighty, 